Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 3DS review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, which we know I've played it before. Um, it's basically your typical Zelda game, I suppose. Uh, it's not your typical Zelda game for the 3DS though, because there's no touchy or anything like that. I mean, you can touch for the map, but there's no um, not moving or hacking or anything like that, which I am so glad about. Because honestly, I absolutely hated Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. I didn't like it at all. I mean, there wasn't anything pretty much positive I could say about either of them. And I tried them multiple times. People kept telling me, give them another chance. And I just couldn't get into them. So I'm really glad that this is actually more like a classic Zelda game. Because it's even set in a classic Zelda world. If you've never played A Link to the Past on the SNES you've missed out on one of the best games in the history of the world. I mean, I absolutely adore A Link to the Past, I really do. So, when I heard that they were going to be doing a new game in the old world, I was extremely excited because at the end of the day, I absolutely loved, uh, as I say, A Link to the Past. So I thought, well, that should be really cool, just going around. And uh, even as a, if it was just a nostalgia trip, it would be fun to see and play. And it's actually not just for the sake of the soldier it's actually an incredibly deep and fantastic zelda game it's really good there's people complaining that it's short but it's an old school style zelda it's not supposed to be 50 hours long like twilight princess and quite frankly i'm glad it's not 50 hours long because i really got bored of those zeldas if i'm honest i got bored of uh playing twilight princess around about the 30 hour mark i just wanted it to be over i'd much rather play a shorter zelda because i mean even Ocarina can be speed beaten in about 15 minutes or something and if you're not using any glitches it can be speed beaten in about 7 hours I think to get 100% 7 hours so it's pretty much the perfect length for me because uh, people are seeing that they're doing it in 12 hours, 10 hours, etc. And personally I think you'd have to be using a guide to beat it on your first time because it, it's not the sort of game that, it, it's not like for example you've played A Link to the Past so you're going to know absolutely everything about this one because the overworld's the same but everything else is completely different even the gimmick to the Zelda game because at the end of the day Link to the Past didn't actually have a gimmick at all and then Ocarina came around and its gimmick on a technicality was uh, the Ocarina because you could play it and uh, walk places but really the gimmick for that Zelda was 3D it was the first time they'd ever done 3D so with this I was a little bit apprehensive because the gimmick is 2D, actually. Uh, that, that, that's the best way to put it, really, because you might have already seen me do it. And it's just, you use, you've got a magic meter there on the left, and basically you can warp into things, and you've already seen us traversing the land, and uh, uh, there's a section where you've got to use it to get past a gap. I mean, if I go back into this room, it's here, just in case you weren't paying attention or anything. So to get across to here if I had to do that or I could use that uh, oh I just got me timing off there or I could use um, this ability to instead of getting me off there walk around there and go onto this block and then this block would take me somewhere and then I could go pretty much anywhere I want to as long as it's on a wall and there isn't a barrier or anything and if the magic power runs out like it just did there then you basically you fall off out of the wall and uh, you lose a bit of energy um so that is its only gimmick, and quite frankly, while it affects gameplay, it doesn't drastically affect it, it doesn't ruin it or anything, it actually adds a new, or I suppose takes away a dimension to the puzzles, if you want to be technical, because as I say, it is 2D instead of 3D, but it does add a new layer of depth to it, and thinking outside the box, and it, it's just all sorts of things that you have to learn how to do in order to play the game, and it's quite cool. Uh... The, as I've already mentioned, while the overworld is the same, so I'm just going to actually go into the overworld, all of the dungeons and everything like that are completely different, and each one's got something that requires you to beat it with, just like a typical Zelda game, except for the fact that you can get the items pretty much whenever you want. I mean, there's only a few that you can't get early on, so you can just hire what you want and do them in whatever order you want to, and it adds a lot of freedom to the game, and a lot of people are praising that, and it's quite a cool feature, but if I'm honest, I don't ever think there was anything wrong with the original way of playing Zelda, especially because it, you can still 
um, go through. I mean, with the original Zelda's, I, I suppose the best way to put it is when you went into Dungeon A, you got Item A, and that allowed you to beat that. Or some people, for some reason, decided to then just get that item and go to the next one, and then go back and beat all the bosses in a go, like in a row, and like essentially create a boss rush mode for themselves, except with a lot of traversing in between. But this one, it, it's a case of if you find a dungeon, then you don't have to go into it and get the item. Instead, you've got to go to your house because your house is where you can then get the items. So the, there isn't really much difference. I mean, it, literally the only thing that it's doing, other than giving you the freedom of doing whichever dungeon you want to do in whichever order, which only really comes into play when replaying the game, because at the end of the day, if you've not played the dungeons before, you're not exactly going to know which ones you're going to like and which ones you're going to not like. I mean, it's not going to be like with Ocarina of Time when you first put that on and you don't know the horrendous... Horrible, just oh the the oh I, I don't even know if I can mention it the oh the water temple ooh how I hate that dungeon uh, so it's not going to be a case of that you're not going to walk up to it and go I just know I'm going to detest this dungeon the only reason people know that we don't like the water dungeon now is because we've played it so I I don't understand the need for the freedom of doing them in whatever order you want especially because as I see it it just means that when you get up to the dungeon if uh, for example I'm carrying here if I go into my equipment. Um, on the which is managed on the bottom screen. I've got the I can't even remember what it's called the tornado rod, and I've got the bow and arrow. Uh, and the bow and arrow is the one that I got first, and it allowed me to do the dungeon that requires a bow and arrow. You might have seen when I was in the second dungeon. Well, d d again, because of the freedom of it, it mightn't be everyone's second dungeon, but for me, it's my second dungeon. Either way, the dungeon that I was in at the start, there was a picture of the tornado rod, so it meant that I need that item in order to progress. So all that meant was, once I finally found the next dungeon, and I got up to it, I had to run all the way back, or fly back, because you've got a... Uh, uh, in Link to the Past, you could play an ocarina, and a duck or something would carry you across and take you somewhere. And on this one, you've got a bell, and you ring the bell, and it takes you to the weather veins, because uh, a witch appears who got a fortune cookie that she had to help green or something like that. So she thinks, because you wear green, that you have to help. So I get the dungeon, I fly back to my house, and then I rent the right item and fly back to the dungeon. All that did was add time onto my journey. I'd have much rather found the dungeon, went straight into the dungeon, solved a puzzle, got the tornado rod, uh, rod and then beat the dungeon and killed the boss and that, you know? It, it just doesn't make much sense to me why it, it's been added. It's nothing bad, it's nothing atrocious, it doesn't ruin the game, and quite frankly, as far as gimmicks and additions to Zelda games go, it's one of the tamest, and therefore I've been able to have a lot of fun with this game, unlike, for example, Skyward Sword, where I was constantly battling against the awful control system and wishing that I had a pad, so it's just the sort of thing that it didn't affect me in a positive way or a negative way, and it's why I just don't get it, it's just not really been for me, but all I see is people saying, oh, I, I absolutely love it, and the level of freedom, and, and I just, again, I don't get it. It's only a level of freedom once you know what you're doing, because it just, I mean, the way the Zelda games worked, I severely doubt anyone other than Ocarina of Time, which seems to have happened to everyone, at least everyone I've spoke to, other than that, I don't think anyone has ever found the dungeons in the wrong order of what the game wants you to find them in. I don't think anyone's been able to beat them in that order because quite a lot of the time it, it is a linear path. I mean, they tell you to go to this dungeon and this dungeon and you experience it for the first time the same as you would as if you'd found it yourself. And it's why I don't get, as I say, that the whole renting to being able to do each one because, I mean, that even if at the start of the game... It, it presented you with there is dungeon A, B and C which one do you want to do first I, I still wouldn't get it I'd still do E, B and C in that order because that's just the way I am and I don't know maybe it's an autism thing that, you know that I, I like logic and structure and always have done so maybe that's why this just doesn't really make sense to me but uh, with Ocarina as I said, that, that seems to be the only one where people have managed to do dungeons in reverse order because everyone I ever spoke to said with the order of the dungeons it was when you became an adult and I, I don't know how anyone even figured out that this wasn't the way to go there must just be a choice all of a sudden that someone makes and that's the way that you do it and now even though I know I'm doing it the wrong way I still always do it in that order because it wants me to but whenever I played Ocarina 3D and I played the boss rush it always gave me the boss of the 
uh, Graveyard Temple, the, I believe that one was the Shadow Temple, at least the song was something like the no Nocturne of Shadow, it always gave me that one before giving me the Boss of the Spirit Temple in the desert. Yet every single person I've ever spoke to says that they did went to the desert first and then the graveyard. So that seems to be the only time that universally people have done it in the wrong order, unless simply for the boss rush on that, they decided to just mix up the order of the bosses or something. I, I never really could fathom out which one it was, and when I have tried to play it and do the graveyard first, while I have managed to do so, it just feels weird to me because I'm used to doing it the other way. So, uh, again, it's why this whole gimmick and that that I've kind of rambled on about, I just don't really get it. It's not really for me, but at the same time, it doesn't ruin the game. It doesn't hurt it. It's one of the le weaker of the uh, changes to gameplay that any Zelda's ever done, and it's, it therefore doesn't affect me to the point of, I think, well, I absolutely detest this game, or I absolutely love it because of that. Instead, it's meant that I've been able to play this game as a standard a Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Ages or Seasons, like that sort of top-down Zelda, but without any form of gimmick or anything, and I've been able to go through it, enjoy it, love it, and it's the sort of thing that I would actually love to see them do again. And there's probably a lot of people already about to leap all over me for what I've said, and how uh, th there's going to most likely be the quote of, well, you're a dinosaur, you, you don't want to change, I mean, you don't like the touchscreen one, you don't like the motion control ones. My biggest problem with any form of enforced gimmick like this on Zelda is Nintendo seem to be the only dev who don't like to ever let their games get steel, and by doing that, they've become steel. It's something that I started to think about a lot during the Wii days, and then the, the way people are talking about the Wii U and how there's, um, what were the PS4 coming out and that, that, there's just a lot of people talking and how they don't like certain consoles and things like that. And with Nintendo, I think I have finally nailed what it is about them that grates on me so much, and it is that they are now still, because... Whereas you've got loads of games out there that come out year in, year out, and I can't stand franchises that do that. You've also then got other games like the Uncharted, where pretty much every Uncharted was kind of like the last. They didn't really change anything up, because they didn't really have to. And I feel with a lot of games like Mario and Zelda and especially F-Zero and Star Fox that they could get away with doing two or three in a row that were very similar and then adding a gimmick. Instead though Nintendo are refusing to release uh, F-Zero because they can't come up with anything new to do. They're I mean, every single Zelda seems to have a new gimmick that you either love or you hate. Uh, every single Mario seems to have to change something up. But it's very rare that we do get two very similar in a row. And it's the first time in a long time that I've even noticed it to happen. And it was with 3D Land and 3D World. They're very similar. And then we also have the new Super Mario Bros. series. And they're all very similar. And it's why I actually enjoy them. Because there's nothing offensive about them to make me hate them there's nothing that ruins the experience and i again i apologize for just kind of ranting on about this but i didn't really have any other weird any other place to go on about it other than here because this is one of those franchises and it, it's just one of those things that as i say by always changing they've kind of became steel because now it's got another fact that they have reached the bottom of the barrel. They must have. And for anyone who thinks that the future's bright and that there's loads of new ideas always around the corner, the reason why I think they've reached the bottom of the barrel is Nintendo invented a system with a touch screen on the bottom. And that was revolutionary. And I knew straight away I was going to like the touch screen. But not every game needed it. And not every game used it properly. And Zelda was especially one of them that I couldn't stand with it. But once it done touch screen. That was it. That, that was touchscreen done. They, they couldn't do it again. They, I mean, they released two on that format, and it, they were kind of similar, and that's it. We didn't get a third, and the next one was a port of Ocarina, and now this one's been this, where it's just like the SNES one, because we've already seen the touchscreen work. We've had it in a Zelda game. So after that, after touchscreen, came motion control. So they created a new controller again to create motion control so that we could get then two Zeldas that played with motion controls and that's it, that's that done. And now the next Zelda is going to have the gamepad. It's getting to the point where if Nintendo don't invent new controllers that seem to themselves then be very hit or very miss and they don't invent new things like that, then they can't make games. So it's getting to the point where we may actually see an end to Zelda. 
Because quite simply, they may not have an ability or a gimmick or anything up their sleeve. They may not have any form of new controller, new tablet design, new anything design that they can do that they can then justify making another Zelda because they're completely out of ideas and they'll refuse to make more of the same because that's the, the exact place that we're in now with f Zero, And a lot of people will say, well, it'll never happen to Zelda. Zelda's far bigger than f Zero, And you're right, it is. f Zero was kind of a niche title because it was a hardcore racer and not many people bought it on the Nintendo systems and it's a shame. But honestly, the way things are going, if things don't pick up for the Wii U like they did with the 3DS, and if Nintendo don't start focusing more on games and less on brand new experiences, then we could eventually get to the point where that's it, there'll never be another Zelda, there'll never be another Mario, because the well is dry, they, they won't be able to come up with anything else. Eventually, we'll get to the point that we're controlling Zelda by plugging electrodes into our ear socket to try and reach the brain so that we can try and think commands to link that that's how bad it's going to eventually get just so that they can justify making the legend of zelda mind control zelda edition and things like that <sighs> but uh it's one of them i have kind of ranted on about that and i do apologize and i know it's not been that much of a review but there's not not really even anything much i could actually see about the game in general because it is essentially a link to the past but slightly different uh, they've added straight pass features, which is one here I can do, and I'm probably going to get absolutely decimated, because for all I know, this guy could have already beaten the game on this file, and the file I'm on, I'm on an early one, and yep, he's got far more energy than me, and basically, the straight pass, you... you even when you lose, you don't really lose. Nothing happens to you. But if you win, then you get money, and that money can then be used for the renting of items and that. So it's always worth doing straight pass. But it means that you are eventually going to meet up with people who've either had the game longer than you or played it for more than you and uh, until you then get to the point where you've fully beaten it and then what's the point in playing the shadow battles because the, you're not going to get any benefit from it because you've already 100% of the game so that again I don't really see the point in that being there it, it's just a little extra thing that they've decided to add and I think unless you're playing against your mates who are all progressing at pretty much the same speed then it's not really going to be an enjoyable feature for many people uh instead it's going to be more of a situation of hey i've beat the game i've done excellent let's send out the hardest link i can do because no one's going to beat me and i don't understand people like that because at the end of the day you're not going to meet these people that you straight past it's not as if you're going to walk up to them and go in your face i'm going to hammer you on street pass you know that sort of thing just doesn't happen uh so again i don't know why they've really added that either but other than the street pass and the, the ability to buy items and that and the, the odd little thing here and there that I've already mentioned, it is a traditional Zelda. So if you are into traditional Zeldas, you'll really enjoy this most likely because I am into traditional Zeldas. I absolutely love this and I'd love to see more of the same, quite literally more of the same because uh, I wouldn't want them to remake, uh, well not so much remakes, it's not a remake, I wouldn't want them to revisit the Hyrule of Ocarina but instead go and let's see what it's like with the motion controls of Skyward Sword. I mean that that would just, I'd cringe at that blatant idea, of the, like that horridness of the idea and everything. So I would now like to see them maybe remake something like Skyward on the gamepad, because at least that plays like a controller. I'd like to see a 3D Majora. I'd like to see more Zeldas done in this style, mainly because then that way it means we're getting more Zeldas, and maybe they can buy more time while they think of new ideas, because rant or not, and bleating on or not, it's the sort of thing that, honestly, I do think it will happen at some point, and everyone loves to see it. It'll never happen. It never will happen. And if that was the case, then Sega would still be in consoles. Then Detroit's Motor City wouldn't be in trouble. All these huge businesses and corporations, all these problems that have arose as time's gone on, because they just eventually ran out of ideas, and the car industry is very, very fickle. I mean, the amount of times that every single month, it seems, a brand new car comes out with new features that the other one didn't have, and the other ones are then left behind in the dust. And games are very much like that. If you're not doing something brand new, then you won't grab the mass audience. But at the same time, by doing something brand new, you're upsetting the the diehards, the, the people who've been there since the beginning. Gaming's never been bigger, but gaming fan bases are dwindling by the deer on certain things because people don't really care anymore 
about games uh, that they used to love that there's so many people who grew up with Mario who now they look at Mario and they think I just I cannot ever see me playing that and it's a shame that they've lost that magic it really is because I still enjoy them I still buy them and love or hate them I always get some sort of reaction from playing a Zelda or a Mario so I'll continue to buy them for that reason but it's just a shame that they are getting to the point in the industry now where it seems time's moving on no one is buying the Wii U it's one of the worst selling consoles in the history of the UK where I am I mean the PS4 managed to outsell it in about 24 hours or something so that then makes me terrified that my shiny Wii U over there is going to eventually become null and void because they'll just think well why bother supporting the UK and it's just I think Nintendo do need to start catering more to the diehards in, instead of trying to cater to the fans who they don't have and try to get them. It worked once before. It's not going to happen again. I really can't see all the casuals who bought into the Wii craze all of a sudden just up and realising that the Wii U is a brand new system and let's all buy into that too. It's something that now they need to do serious damage control and they need to go, hey, listen, everyone we, we really upset with, you know, the motion controls, everyone we really upset with this, that and the other, please give us another chance. Here's a blah, 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 no gimmicks at all, just a regular update. Here's a, another blah, you know, like a, they could start with a Star Fox and a F0. I know I've mentioned them before earlier on, but they could start with those two and just go there, have them, no gimmicks at all, just 1080p. Look at the stunning visuals that we've been able to produce. It's the characters you love, it's the gameplay that you've wanted. There's absolutely nothing unique about it at all, except we've done new tracks, new crafts. Uh, in Starcraft, Star Fox's terms, new levels, new locations bringing back some old ones in glorious 1080p like venom uh, and corneria and that and i think that would go a long way to uh getting some sales and appeasing some fans i really do instead it's most likely they're going to be here's f-zero we finally came up with a new gimmick basically it's a controller for your bum you're going to stick it under you, and when you want to turn left, you lean left, and when you want to turn right, you lean right, and it's going to be very similar to the uh, Wii Balance Board, except it's going to be called the Wii Butt Board. You know, it's just the sort of thing I can honestly see things like that happening.